Okay, so welcome to this next episode. So far we have a node in every cell of the Battlescape. We have an array that stores all of the nodes that we can walk to from a specific point. We have an array that holds all the nodes that we want to walk along for a path. So now we actually want to have something use that path which we're going to be covering that today. Uh, one thing I would like to explain to you first is we're going to be doing the calculations for movement on a top-down 2D or Cartesian plane. This is because it's just a lot easier to do it that way and probably the whole game uh, mechanically is just a top-down 2D game we're just going to be drawing it from the isometric perspective. So to help us do that, in the create event of our controller object, we have a new variable or macro called grid size, and we're going to give it the arbitrary value of 16, which is just simply how big is a cell in our top down 2D grid that we're not going to see. Uh, sometimes well, in the past, I've uh, I've debugged stuff in uh, a top-down 2D perspective, and uh, I would use the grid size for that. Uh, we may or may not do it in this tutorial, but um, as long as you understand that the whole game really is just a top-down 2D game, and we're just drawing it in isometric, then that's all you need to understand for this, really. So once we've got that, uh, we want to make a new object called OBJ Actor. And it's not going to have any events. Uh, it is going to have a sprite, which I'll show you in a minute. And make sure that you uncheck the visible box as well, because we don't want this object to be drawing itself, because it's going to be drawing itself on those Cartesian coordinates, which is not going to match our isometric game. Uh, we're going to be drawing it from our Battlescape object instead. So for the sprite, all I've done is I grabbed the cursor sprite and I gave it three different colours. Um, if you want to introduce your own sprites right now, then go for it. You know, uh, now is a good time to do that. So now we have an object and a sprite to go with it. We want to spawn it into our game. So if we go into the step events of our Battlescape object, uh, we are going to be updating our nodes again with one more variable. Uh, we're going to be storing the actor ID with our nodes. So, so for example, what, what, uh, what node is an actor occupying? We're going to be storing that in the node itself. So again, in the create state, we're in the create nodes region and then create a node for every cell and then uh, within our uh, with loop here we're going to be adding actor id as no one for each node um, the way that i have the variables right now with some of them having an underscore and some of them not isn't really a good way to do it because i'm not respecting uh the syntax that I've already set down. Uh, there is a reason that I gave parent an underscore. That's because uh, GameMaker is already using that uh, word for something else. So I didn't want to have some kind of conflict, but we only added it uh, after other variables. So at some point I may change all these to underscore or I may, I may change parent to something else. So uh, I tried to kind of cover that point while we're here right now. So anyway, uh, we have a new variable called actor ID and it's going to be either no one or it's going to have an instance ID of OBJ actor. So that's that done. We can close this region as well. And then we have a brand new region inside the create state called create units. It's just going to be making one for now. But uh, when we actually get to a proper game, then this will probably be a great place to spawn everybody. So spawn X and spawn Y is going to be 
our 2D cell coordinates. So for example, if we have a 10 by 10 grid, uh, the middle of it would be probably four, four or five, five, something like that. So spawn X and spawn Y is where we want our actor to be on the grid. And his actual Cartesian coordinates is gonna be spawn X times grid size and spawn Y times grid size. And we're going to be changing uh, whatever node is at these cell coordinates on the bottom floor, we're going to be changing its actor ID to our unit that we just made. And now that we've done that, let's draw the actor. So in the draw event for the battlescape, from the very top, uh, Underneath where we're grabbing the data list, we're gonna grab the node for the cell, which is done here. And then we're gonna grab the actor ID for that node. And then underneath where we're drawing the stuff for the data, we're gonna draw the actor themselves. So check to see if there actually is an actor to draw. And then, uh, so we can have smooth movement when the actor is moving, moving from cell to cell. We actually want to convert his coordinates, um, even if he's in between cells. So to do that, we're going to get uh, underscore XX and underscore YY, which is going to be the Cartesian coordinates X and Y divided by grid size. And then the isometric coordinates are going to be handled here so it's very similar to draw x draw y but it's based on the you know it's not based on a grid cell anymore it's based on uh, the act the actor's actual coordinates and then we're going to draw them here like that and <laughs> it seems like a long-winded way to get this result which if you run the game now you'll see but there are there are reasons that we're doing it this way. So here's our actor. Uh, the reason we're doing it like this is because uh, everything needs to be drawn in a particular order. So we don't want uh, you know, the actors to, to be drawing themselves and then the floor to be drawn over them or like a wall to be drawn over them from the same cell. We just want to make sure that when, when we get to, to be drawing a particular cell, if there's an actor there, we draw him after the walls and after the decoration basically so that's what all of that was for okay so the next thing we are going to do is go into the well we're going to make an event for the actor object we're going to make a create event and all we're going to do is we are going to make a simple enumerator state system with idle and move and then set the actor state to idle and then most of what we're going to be doing today is going to be in the step event of our battle scape object. So again, in the create nodes region, create a node for every cell. Uh, when we initially made the nodes, we were just creating them at the zero zero coordinates. But now we're going to be using them for, for pathfinding. We actually want them to be placed over a 2D grid. So uh, these two lines here, they're going to be calculating the nodes uh, position Cartesian coordinates and we're going to be creating the node at those coordinates now so that's that change and then in the create units region we've got a new region here and we're just going to be setting the units grid X and grid Y as well as the units starting level Then in the ready state, we have the pathfinding region. And then we're going to have a variable called CA, which stands for current actor. And we only have one instance of OBJ actor. So we're just going to use this for now. 
uh, start node has been updated to use the current actors level, the current actors grid X and the current actors grid Y. Then after we have filled nodes within range and we click again, we want to first of all check that the node we clicked on, the end node, is actually within nodes within range because it's actually able to, it's possible to move um, two tiles outside this range right now. So we're just checking to make sure the end node is inside nodes within range. And if it, if it is, then we're going to run this code as before. And uh, if the player clicks on the same node that you're starting on, then the size of the path is going to be one. And if that's the case, we just want to ignore it, you know, because uh, they're not trying to move or they made a mistake or something. So as long as the size of the path is greater than one, then it means the player wants to move somewhere. Uh, we want to remove or clear the actor ID of the node that the current, current actor is currently on because we're using the node to tell us when to draw actors. So this stuff is important. And then with the current actor, we're going to tell it its state is going to be move. We're going to give it a variable called path and link it to the battlescape path here. And then we're going to give it the first target node using a new script called SCR get next path node. And we're going to be passing that script, the path array like that. And this is going to start our actor moving and we're going to tackle this script next. So if we make a new script called SCR get next path node, we're going to stick it in the pathfinding folder. So here we are. Let's go into it now. And as you can see, it's a pretty small script. It's uh, really simple because we've done the hard work really. So we're just going to be passing, passing it the path of nodes. Um, and then all that happens is every time this script gets called, it's going to check to see if there are any more nodes in the path. If there are, it's going to calculate the position for the last entry in the array, which is the priority. Then we're going to uh, get the ID of the node, which is in the last position of the path. And we also are going to delete that position from the path as well. So the array is going to get smaller and smaller as we go along. If, however, uh, the size of the path is zero or less, then next node is going to be set to no one and we're going to return next node. So basically next node is going to be either a node or it's going to be no one. That's what we're going to end up with there. Okay, so now you should have, have all the uh, yellow marks and stuff should all be gone after this bit here. So now we're going to make a step event for our actor object. Uh, there's a bit of code to do here, but this is the outline of it in the step event. So if the actor is moving, you've got this to do. So first of all, so if either X or Y is not at the target node.x or target node.y, then move there. So as long as uh, one of those axes is not where they should be, then move and update our actors grid X and grid Y. And also the level, we want to make sure the actor knows what level it's on. So if however the actor is at the target coordinates, then this code is going to run. So previous node is going to be the target node that we just moved to the run right now. And then target node is going to be our next path node, but it could be no one. We could be at the end. If we are at the end, then just tell this uh, actor to be idle. Otherwise, if it's actually a node that we have to travel to, then we're going to tell our target node that its actor ID is this actor. So we can draw it and the previous node that we stored here, we're going to tell it it no longer, no longer has an actor like that. So that's the step event. And then in the draw event, 
we've updated the uh, draw actor region. So uh, this line here, line 43, we're now taking into account the actor's level when drawing it. And that should be it. If we run the game, we can actually see our hard work paying off now. So there's our, oh, I um, I changed the view in the room to be 320 by 240, I think it was. Let me, let me double check. Just while I was testing it, you don't have to do this, but if you want to see this, the zoomed in version, then uh, what did I change it to? Uh, yeah, 320 by 240 gives you this, basically. So click anywhere. This is where the actor can move. I'll go towards the door. You can see the draw order isn't great. That's because um, when moving up, the floor gets drawn after the actor. So I'm not worried about the draw order right now. So click again. Let's move towards the stairs. And then if I click again and press up and choose somewhere on the next level, then he moves there. Then click again and let's move back down. And there we go. We have an actor that can move around. So uh, you can see it's coming together bit by bit. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I will catch you next time. Bye for now.